The story of Rud Mu begins in the 1900s with a British archaeologist named Sir Mark Arl Stein, who was traveling through Asia and specifically Tibet when he met a Taoist monk. The Taoist monk went on to tell him this incredible story about these set of caves high in the cliffs known as the Caves of a Thousand Buddhas. In this story, the Taoist monk describes how they were doing restoration work on a number of these caves, and near cave number 16, they discovered a hidden chamber that opened up to a library that had not been seen by humans in over 800 years. As Stein was going through the library, he found pieces of an ancient map that described the lost civilizations of Mu and Atlantis. It also gave us descriptions of this volatile time period, showing inland flooding throughout North and South America, showing these catastrophes that were ongoing on the Earth at the time. And this map seems to give us a snapshot into a lost time period in history, showing that the Mu civilization in this entire landmass that had existed in the Pacific was in the process of being destroyed. And this map gives us a window into the past to understand this forgotten civilization and gives us the proof that it truly existed. After Sir Mark Arl Stein obtained this ancient map from the Taos monk, he brought it back with him, along with a number of other ancient texts. And that's when he got the attention of another writer, James Churchward. One of the most prolific writers on Mew was James Churchward. What Churchward said was that the survivors of Mew actually came onto the Asian continent and are the Uyghurs, the people that occupy what is today the extreme west of China, much persecuted people as we know, that they were actually the final remnants of the inhabitants of Mu. James Churchward really was the father of the evidence and the theories regarding the civilization of Mu. And that's where the story building off of the discoveries in the Taos cave of this map really begin because it was when James Churchward found some of the evidence that was being discovered outside of Mexico City by a man named William Niven, who discovered over 100 andesite tablets that were very mysterious at the time. It was when James Churchward got a hold of those rubbings of those tablets that the whole story really came together. Because according to James Churchward in his book, he describes how the tablets gave the context of the descriptions of the civilization of Mu, whereas the map gave the location and the details of how it was destroyed. Coupled together with the map and this new information, James Churchward formulated this entire set of new theories that we now build off of for the civilization of Mu and where it existed and when it existed. Geologists do acknowledge that there was a landmass called Sunderland an ancient landmass precisely in the location in the Pacific where the ancient traditions say that this motherland existed. This land was exposed during a time in geologic history when the temperatures are much colder, during the ice ages. Geologists actually look at this land bridge as the route for the migration from people from New Guinea, for example, in New Zealand into Australia. They were able to go across these land bridges because the water levels were low. According to Churchward, there was a continent that stretched all the way from what today we call the Hawaiian Islands, down into Easter Island, over into the Indonesian Islands to the west. If you can imagine in the Pacific Ocean, a massive continent of that size in place of what we see as, as water today.